Bonjour à tous. Euh, alors aujourd'hui, nous avons la chance de recevoir Frank Carter et euh, Dean Richardson de, du groupe euh, Frank Carter and the Battle Snakes. Bonjour. Ça va bien Very, very well, thank you. Bon, je pense que je parle un peu euh, au nom de tout le monde. On est d'accord, on est très, très, très content de passer euh, ce petit euh, moment avec vous, d'autant qu'on euh, est là pour parler de votre nouvel album, End of Suffering, qui sort le 3 mai prochain. Euh, J'ai l'impression que c'est un disque particulier pour vous. On sent euh, beaucoup de, de fierté et surtout le sentiment que vous êtes allé encore plus loin dans la composition. Est-ce qu'on peut dire que ce End of Suffering est une sorte de, de tournant dans, dans l'histoire du groupe Yeah, drastically. I mean, we always like to challenge ourselves and our fans when we're writing music. Um, but with this album particularly, we decided to basically take the car and just push it off the cliff <laughs> and just like push it as far as we could away from us and away from the band that our fans knew. Um, really, just to, because just to, um, we had to, we needed to, you know, it ne there needed to be such a bold change in everything we were doing. Um, and that just felt like the natural right step. So. Alors quand on écoute vos, vos trois albums, on se rend compte que le, le côté punk hardcore est de moins en moins présent, euh, encore plus avec End of Suffering, euh, où on retrouve une énergie qui va être plus canalisée, des mélodies qui vont être plus mises en avant, voire euh, des morceaux un peu plus calmes. Pourquoi vous vous êtes éloigné de ce style au fur et à mesure des, des années um, it, I haven't. It's just, you know, punk to me has never been a music it's never been a genre it's never been clothing punk is in your heart like you you either have it or you don't um and i think probably the most punk rock thing we could do was take a band that was being championed as the savior of punk and start writing acoustic songs Ok, bah ça tombe bien parce que vous allez en jouer des morceaux acoustiques dans quelques instants. Alors, je voulais revenir sur la, la composition de ce disque. Euh, cet album, vous l'avez fait tous les deux. Euh, on sent une vraie complicité qui s'est installée en, entre vous depuis, depuis le début du groupe. Est-ce qu'on peut revenir justement sur cette, cette période Comment s'est passée la, la naissance de ce nouvel album Ah, it was um, absolute desperation, <laughs> wasn't it we, we, we had You know, we wrote Blossom and Modern Ruin back to back within what, 12, 12 months. And, and then we held them so that we had some time to release them over a couple of years. Um, with this, we were so, this album is probably three years too late. We just needed to write it, you know, we really needed to get it out. But every time we sat down to write, um, it just wasn't really there. And then one day, Dean came along with a new riff. I had the right lyrics, and by the end of that day, I think we had two or three of the songs from the new album, and the direction was there, and we just felt like, for the first time ever, that we were kind of, um, it all made sense, and then it just happened really quickly. It just happened super fast. Et pour ce disque, après, vous avez travaillé avec une sacrée équipe, il faut le dire. Donc on a d'un côté à la production Cam Blackwood, qui est très connu notamment pour avoir bossé avec London Grammar, avec George Ezra ou encore Florence and the Machine. Et de l'autre, au mixage, une légende des années 90, qui n'est autre que Alan Mulder. Alors déjà, première question, pourquoi avoir choisi Cam Blackwood pour, pour produire ce nouvel album On peut dire que c'est une belle prise de risque quand même. Yeah, exactly that. We wanted a risk. Um, we wanted to take someone that had made great pop records, um, who loves... He, the thing about Cam is he loves rock music. You know, he really... He, he's a rock kid at heart. And I think more it was that he was so excited to work with us. We've always been um, excited to work with each other, and I think that was... We just want to see that in the team around us. Um, we want people that are you know, not only happy to work with us, but really show drive. And he, above everyone, went out of his way to keep Dean up till like 7 a.m. one night, like telling him, I'm the guy to make your album. And so we just, um, yeah, with Cam, it was no question. He, we knew that when he got in the studio, he would challenge us like no other producer has. And with Alan, what more can you say about Alan? He's, he's made probably all of the best rock records of all time. I stand by that. Euh, puis en plus, ce qui est aussi marquant, c'est que c'est vrai que vos deux premiers albums avaient été produits par votre, votre guitariste, Thomas, je crois qu'il n'est plus dans le groupe aujourd'hui. Euh, du coup, c'est la première fois que vous avez euh, des personnes extérieures qui viennent s'impliquer dans la production avec vous, en fait. 
Yeah, Tom is still very much around, but he's just having a baby. So we sort of allowed him to go and be the adult that he needs to be now. Um, but he's still producing incredible records, and we're super proud of everything that we made with him. But with, but with this, we needed a change. It was just um, we wanted someone, like I said earlier, that was going to challenge us. And, um, yeah, I think sometimes it's quite difficult with rock music. You can get quite comfortable with the team around you. We needed to shake it up, didn't we? Because Tom has just made, he made effortlessly two albums for us. Um, we needed someone that was, that was going to really take the next step and allow us to, to do anything and not question it. And Cam did that immediately. So. En tout cas, on ressent vraiment beaucoup, enfin, beaucoup de surprises dans ce nouvel album. Je ne sais pas si les gens ici ont eu la chance de pouvoir y jeter une oreille, mais en tout cas, euh, on retrouve donc, euh, un album incroyable, euh, mais euh, peut-être un petit peu moins punk hardcore euh, comparé au premier, mais en tout cas, cette énergie, on la retrouve en live. On a toujours ce, cette même folie, euh, comme si vos morceaux prenaient une autre dimension une fois que vous les jouez sur scène. Euh, C'est d'autant plus marquant qu'en général, dans, dans le milieu du rock, on a l'impression que les groupes, les groupes vont essayer de, de prendre leur énergie live et de la mettre sur CD. Mais vous, vous fonctionnez complètement différemment, en fait. Exactly that. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> no, I think what we tried to do was change the delivery. You know, when you're screaming and you're spitting and you're going 100 miles an hour at people, um, quite often your fans are like, okay, <laughs> calm down. Like, um, with this, we were able to take some time. So the intensity is still there. The words are like, I mean, it's, it's the most personal record I've ever written. It's definitely the most focused and the most charged. And live, for the first time ever, every instrument, including my voice, has space. Never had that before. It was always a battery. It was always an arsenal of every weapon going off at the same time. Whereas now, we've been a lot more careful. We're picking our shots and we're giving space. So suddenly, you take a band that is all energy, but probably quite small, and you make it sound gigantic. Like, and that's what we've been trying to do for 10 years in our bands, is find a way to make us, and we feel quite small sometimes, enormous. And I think we were able to do that, but we had to not really slow down because if you see us live we we haven't slowed down <laughs> but we needed to just give everything some space so yeah et justement, vous parliez de, de concerts. J'ai vu que sur vos, vos derniers lives, vous avez joué pas mal de nouveaux morceaux, alors que l'album n'est pas encore sorti. Est-ce que finalement, vous avez eu des, des réactions un petit peu particulières de la, fa, de la part des fans Est-ce qu'il y a eu, il y a eu des, des moments où ils étaient étonnés comment, comment ça fait de, de jouer ces nouveaux morceaux devant, devant le public C'est difficile de savoir ce que les gens pensent vraiment quand le dance floor est un mosh pit. Vous savez Je juste take ça that we're doing a good job. <laughs> like, we kind of, I think we got it right. Like, there's no worries. <laughs> ah bon, du coup, je pense que les nouveaux morceaux en live fonctionnent plutôt bien. Euh, bah, vous avez joué, tiens, dans, dans quelques instants, quelques morceaux, et notamment votre titre, votre single, Crowbar. Euh, pourquoi avoir, avoir choisi ce morceau en premier aperçu de l'album Et euh, qu est quelle est l'histoire qui se cache derrière ce titre we needed, a, we needed a mission statement. You know, we needed a single that was going to tell everybody exactly how we felt at the time. And the idea behind the song is that when you go through life, a lot of people tell you what you should wear, what you should listen to, who you should love, how you should look, how you should behave. And unless those opinions align directly with how you feel in your heart, then you should probably tell those people to fuck off. C'est marrant parce que ça suit bien avec mes questions qui suivent, ça fait un petit peu leur killing in the name en fait. I can never say that. Like that's, that's, you know, you, you shouldn't say that either. But yeah. yeah. Ouais. En tout cas, ça me permet de rebondir sur le fait que vous avez quand même un invité de marque sur ce nouvel album. Vous en avez deux. Vous avez Tom Morello qui a participé donc à un titre. Est-ce que est, ce futuring est, est, est parti peut-être de votre petit kiff qui s'est passé au Resurrection Fest peut-être? Come in the name of! Come in the name of! Now you do what they told ya! Take a drink! 
exactly that. We just, we've been friends for a long time. My old band Gallows played with Rage Against the Machine a long time ago. And um, so we've always, we've always been fans of each other, which is crazy that I can say that he's my friend. Um, but we bumped into each other in Spain and um, we played right before them uh, on, a, on a main stage and I just got a bit drunk and a bit carried away and uh, all of a sudden I was on stage and um, yeah, and he didn't kick me off so it worked out real good. Now he's on the album. <laughs> Je pense qu'il est temps de, de, vous, de vous les laisser jouer. On est impatient en tout cas de vous entendre, d'entendre interpréter ces, ces nouveaux morceaux. Juste une, une dernière question. Je pense qu'on a tous testé ici de faire du, du crowd surfing. Hein, et puis on s'est viandé la gueule méchamment. Je pense qu'on a un des rois ici. Donc on peut peut-être peut lui demander quelques conseils. C'est quoi ouais, tes, tes conseils, ton, ton secret pour faire un beau crowd surfing réussi The only thing you need is people. <laughs> like this literally is really, really simple. If you're going to crowd surf, Just jump on the most people possible and just give it a five point frog splash and just and if you grab on your way down that usually helps, yeah. Slow yourself down. <laughs> Ok, bon, en tout cas, merci beaucoup pour, euh, pour tous ces conseils. Je pense qu'il est temps de vous laisser jouer. Merci. <laughs> merci beaucoup. Thank you. Yeah.